Hi and welcome to Bung Mung Prison. Well today we're here to clean the prison and tomorrow we're coming back to paint the prison and basically the prison only gets cleaned whenever we do it. So this prison is not being cleaned for 18 months so you can imagine what the toilets are like and what the walls are like. It's pretty gross in there but you know what it's getting transformed by the minute by this amazing team of Bible College students that have come to help us today. We're just doing community service this week, showing the love of God to people of Thailand and even to the less fortunate, the prisoners here, that God loves everyone. We are now in Patia Police Station as a VBCI student. We are doing outreach to minister to here in, VBC, in Patia. We are going to cleaning, they cleaning the prison as we help them, as we reaching them for helping them and to preaching them with the gospel of God. So we're here at the Bung Lamong prison and you know a lot of foreigners are really surprised when they get into jail about how bad the conditions are. And it's not because the Thai people don't care, but you know what, there's just no budget. And so you know in our prisons back home in Australia and America and Canada, you know we have beds and TVs and exercise yards, but here in the Thai prison you don't even have a bed. You have a concrete floor to lie on and um, as I said before, you know, these prisons aren't cleaned or have done anything to unless we come in and do it. So when we come, you know, our aim is not just to feed the people, it's not just to clothe them, but it's to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to them as well. And we are here to uh, uh, help uh, Margaret Ministry, I mean, uh, to come and uh, painting in the jail uh, and a drawing and uh, speaking to uh, President as well. well now, right now, we have a forum. One, two, three, forum in the J. So, but every J has a full of people. So, I don't know how we're gonna paint it. But they, I think they need to move out. You know, last year in February, we went to the jail, and there was this old Cambodian lady, and she was lying on the floor and she was obviously very very ill and we held her in our arms and we just said you know what God really loves you and we didn't tell her you know you've got to pray and you know or didn't tell her anything about heaven and we just picked her up and we just held her in, a hat in our arms and we we're just holding her and we just told her you know God loves you we didn't preach the gospel to her we didn't say you need to pray a prayer of salvation we just held her and said God loves you and she raised her hands and she says pray Jesus Pray Jesus, pray Jesus, which is Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. And she died right there in our arms. And uh, you can imagine, we were a little bit shocked. We didn't quite know what to do. And so I went out and, and told the guard that the lady had just died. And, and as I was going back into the, the jail, I could hear all of the Cambodians just wailing hysterically. And, and I knew that I had to calm them down before the chief of police came down because he would be really angry. And, uh, and we had this dead lady lying on the floor and, and I'm like, God, I've never been in this situation before. I don't know what to do here. And I don't know how to calm these people down and I don't know what to say. And, and God said to me very clearly, he said, if you open your mouth, I'll fill it. So God is so faithful. I preached for a maximum two minutes about heaven and how she was not in pain anymore and she was not in jail anymore and she was not hungry anymore and all the Cambodians gave their hearts to the Lord and you know what God sent his spirit and something broke in here and yes there was they were still sad but there was not that mourning and that grief and that crying out in sorrow and we began to sing songs of joy and there was a lady there and she was crying and she's saying that was my mom that was my mom why did my mom have to die on a prison floor and we just witnessed to her and and she got saved and I I went home that night and went into my prayer closet and 
was just meditating on what God had done and, and thanking Him and just, you know, just trying to process everything that had happened. And God reminded me of the verse. He said, call in the name of the Lord and you and your household will get saved. You know, this old lady, she didn't pray any prayer of salvation. She simply called on the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. And she and her household got saved that day. And it's so simple, you know, I, this ministry really encourages me all the time. Sometimes we complicate it so much, we have all these amazing programs, but you know what? The gospel is so simple. Go tell someone that God loves them. When we look at Margaret's life and the way God has used her to minister not only to these children, but to the prisoners and so on around this city of Paddy, as we're going to see unfold here in this program of Continuum, really I want you to notice that these are people with a real need. You know, today we're talking about how God wants to move us into a place of effectiveness, but this place of effectiveness is a place where we really allow God to use our lives to touch people like these children who are wandering the streets of Padilla, whose parents are involved in all kinds of things, or most of them don't really have a set of parents, and the people in the prisons who are, you know, come to Thailand to find work or whatever and, and end up in jail. All they're trying to do is survive, you know, and uh, God has people that have tremendous needs, but He has His heart in you and I. And so when we see Margaret's life here, you know, it's not enough just to say, uh, here I am, Lord, you know, use me. What do you want me to do? But the next step is that we have to say, God, I'm willing and obedient. What it is you're telling me to do, I'm gonna step out and do it. Across all of the fears, against all of the fears. And of course, it doesn't matter what kind of ministry you try to do, there'll be all kinds of people that come along and say, no, you can't do that. That won't work, that'll never be any good. You know, oh yeah, you'll run out of resources, you'll run out of ideas, whatever it may be. But you see, in Margaret's life, in your life and my life, we need to make that jump through willingness and obedience into now we know what God wants us to do. You know, it's not gonna be easy. It's always gonna be something that we've never done before. I always like to say, you know, no previous experience required because God is gonna have us doing something new as we make the jump. And uh, let's look at Margaret's life now and see some of the amazing things that God is doing through her. From the very beginning when I went to the prison and people said, how are you gonna do it? I said, I don't know. What are you gonna do? I don't know. How are you going to get in? I don't know. How are you going to teach all these kids? I don't know. You know, I started to have doubts like, God, am I really supposed to be doing this? Like, you know, where are you going to get all the resources from? I don't know. But you know what? God knows. It's scary to make that jump into the unknown because, you know, it's, it's easy to say walk by faith, you know? But when you're jumping out in faith, sometimes it's not that easy. But then God brings me back to that whole thing you know, that, that whole thing in the prison for me was pivotal at the very beginning, not knowing what to do. Because so many times God brings me back to that point. You had no idea what you were doing, but you just had your eyes on me. And he just keeps bringing, like whenever I'm like, oh God, <laughs> you know, I feel so inadequate. You know, I, I don't feel like I'm worthy of all of the blessing and the anointing and the vision and the ministry that I've been given. But you know what? God told me about a year later, He said, I chose you because if I told you to turn left, you turn left. And if I told you to turn right, you turn right because you didn't know what it was supposed to look like. And you had no preconceived ideas of what you were supposed to do. You had to rely on me. And so when I started up hand to hand, you know, there was fears of like, what am I supposed to do next? You know, when I, I came back and the ministry exploded and sometimes we had 133 kids, you know, I, I described to people, sometimes I felt like I was walking on water and sometimes I felt like I was drowning and I didn't know what to do. And so, you know, it's been scary sometimes. I. I don't know what the next step is. I don't know what God's gonna have for us this year. You know, we've written out a plan of what we want to achieve this year, but you know what? I just kept my mind open and said, God, I know that you will not let me fail. And so that's one of the biggest things for me is just saying, you know what, God, from my very early walk in my life with you, you have been my abundant provider. You've always been there. And so just 
letting go of those feelings of needing to control things or work things out. It's like, and that doesn't mean that you're irresponsible either. It means that you know you are prepared and that you do have everything in order. But at the same time, you're saying, God, I'm just going to go with whatever you're leading me to do. Hey, uh, since joining seven weeks in Asia, got to experience all types of different culture around Southeast Asia and especially up in the northern hill, hill tribe and in the jungle villages. Had all kinds of fun and exciting ad adventures and just got to meet some amazing and really interesting people. So I just want to invite you out to come and join seven weeks in Asia and you know what I can guarantee you your, your life will never be the same again. What kind of special faith does it take? to do exploits like what you see in Margaret's life. You know, she's fresh into the kingdom of God. You know, she's from another country and a single lady, and yet God is using her to do all of these amazing things. So really, there's no kind of special faith at all. It's simply like Margaret said, you know, you say, God, here I am. What do you want me to do? Then you'd be willing and obedient to do those things. And really, it comes down to simple, let's trust the Lord. If God is speaking to our hearts and he's calling us to do something, then we can simply trust him for all of the provision, all of the, idea, all of the resources, whether it be uh, relationships or uh, you know, administrative stuff, whatever it may be. There certainly is. There's a lot of stuff that has to come together for your ministry and my ministry and Margaret's ministry to succeed but we can trust the Lord. Thank God we have a big God, amen? And uh, He can put what He's put in you into the lives of others through our willingness and obedience and through our trust in Him. So I wanna encourage you today on Continuum, you know, to trust God. Get involved in His Great Commission mission for your life. There's a destiny that God has on you to do something in this part of the world. So I want to encourage you today to really, you know, say, God, here I am. Let's make the jump into something greater this year. Let's make the jump into those things, you know, that are, that are in our hearts that we're saying, God, oh, I'd love to do this. Let's be not only willing and obedient, but let's trust the Lord. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He has everything that you and I need. So I want to encourage you to again, get involved in the Great Commission mission. All of our contact information is on your screen there, and you can contact us. You can support us financially in prayer you can come and visit us bring a team there's all kinds of work that needs to be done from where you are God wants to move you to places where you can meet a great commission destiny like nothing you ever dreamed of I think that God has a, a specific call on every single person's life and I think anybody with a, a call for children on their life could come and do this for sure and you know what God is looking for anyone with an open heart and willing hands. And so sometimes I think we say, oh, I haven't got time, I haven't got the resources, I don't have the knowledge. But you know what, you don't need all of that. You just need God. And so I really do believe that anyone with a call for children upon their life could do what I'm doing. Contact us today. World Mission Continuum, P.O. Box 32056, Edmonton, Alberta, T6K4C2 or phone toll-free at 1-800-958-3352. Email info at wmcontinuum.com.